Hi everyone. My name is Johan Gustafsson. I'm a bioinformatics engagement officer with the Australian Biocommons. And today I'd like to talk to you about an Australian Biocommons service called Toolfinder, which aids in the discovery of bioinformatics software in an Australian infrastructure context. I'd like to begin by talking about the Biocommons communities. The reason for this is that the Biocommons is built on our communities. And this means that the requirements and challenges of those communities define our approach to bioinformatics infrastructure and really underpin delivery of the aspiration, which is democratised access to community supported tools and workflows available on fit for purpose infrastructure for bioinformatics. So who are these communities? Our communities can be split into three broad groups. The first is the researchers. Um, typically, we will create researcher communities of practice for domains like proteomics or for a specific end goal. Uh, These things like genome assembly or genome annotation. The second group is our national science drivers. Key for the Biocommons are the BioPlatforms Australia framework initiatives. Some examples of these include Oz Mammals Genomics, the Threatened Species Initiative, and Genomics for Australian Plants. These are national scale consortium efforts, uh, typically including multiple institutions as well as international collaborators. And they'll typically have a very um, have a set focus. So they will do genome assemblies or they will do phylogenomics. And finally, we have the infrastructures. And these are data producing core facilities like the Ramachotti Centre for Genomics, the Australian Genome Research Facility, the Australian Proteome Analysis Facility and Metabolomics Australia. But it's also the Biocommons partner infrastructures, which you can see um, um, the logos for here on this slide. The role of the Biocommons is to be the glue, forming bridges between these communities. So we're an integrator. We want to discover ways to better use the resources available to accelerate life science research in Australia and develop solutions that are fit for purpose for the Australian context. One aspect to this is increasing transparency. And broadly speaking, this is what's available and where can I access what's available? This much was clear from community consultations where we heard requirements um, such as, wouldn't it be nice if we could share learnings from development of tools? Um, wouldn't it be nice to have a tool index or be able to adopt registry platforms to address their requirements? or access publicly available workflows, or have shared wikis, again, for bioinformatics, um, uh, focus on things like workflows, uh, information around compute, those kinds of things. Which brings us to the road we took to reach Toolfinder. We had a demonstrable need from community requirements that said, um, we want transparency. But what we also found was that when um, we were engaging with communities, we could identify tools of importance or relevance to those communities. And we could do something very similar for our partner infrastructures. So in both cases, we could identify tools, either that were of interest or of relevance, or in the case of partner infrastructures were actually installed, right? they were available to use. But there was no way to articulate these two observations um, and provide this information back to the community in a digestible and meaningful way, right? We didn't have that mechanism. If we did have such a mechanism, then both the community and our infrastructure partners could begin leveraging this information to the benefit of everyone. Um, and the community could start asking questions like, what are my pathways to tool usage? Um, what tools would I like to request that I can clearly see now are missing? Um, and in the same way, the infrastructure could ask very similar, similar questions. They could ask what's missing, what are other facilities supporting? And this led us to create Toolfinder. Um, so Toolfinder is an interactive, searchable and sortable list of bioinformatics tools of interest to the Australian bioinformatics community. It provides information about installed tool versions across Australian computational infrastructures 
it displays standardized metadata sourced from international registries and it provides pathways to these registries through direct links. This is what Toolfinder looks like today. Um, a URL is available at the top of this slide. It's important to note that initially when we started, this was an internally maintained Google Sheet and it's now been transformed into a publicly available service maintained via a Git repository that integrates with both national and international peer infrastructures and provides a rich set of information back to the life science community. It is split between tool metadata, which really addresses findability, so the F in FAIR, and the availability of specific versions uh, of tools across Australian national compute infrastructures addressing that accessibility uh, aspect. In order to build Toolfinder, so if you wanted to start from scratch and rebuild the service from um, what's available on the, um, in the GitHub repository, um, we would clone the repository to um, desktop, download a locally curated list of bioinformatics tools that's maintained um, by the biocommons. We would then develop the Toolfinder webpage, its appearance, its backend, the content in our studio. Once we're happy with um, the current version, we can push that up to the repository and then review all the content and further develop it as needed um, back in our studio. There are two important aspects to note here. The first is that we um, draw on community information. And so this is really that locally curated list of bioinformatics tools. Um, the tools included in this list are drawn from things like the Biocommons uh, Community of Practice Roadmaps, direct engagements with our researchers, um, but also Biocommons projects, which draw on that entire um, community ecosystem that I showed earlier. This is a very important point. Um, we are trying to provide something which is of relevance to the Australian context. So if you look at Toolfinder, we're just over 460 tools, but Bio.Tools lists over 22,000. So the key isn't that we want to represent every single tool. We want to represent those tools that are important to Australian researchers, um, and in many cases are then also available on Australian infrastructures. The second important point is the infrastructure integration um, that we um, have undertaken. The most significant examples of this include um, with um, Elixir. So we integrate with um, the Elixir tools platform, bio.tools, uh, which also leverages the EDEM ontology. And so what we are able to do is um, collect tool metadata um, from an international best practice source and because we do that we can also um, use the EDEM ontology to categorize um, those tools. We also um, are able to access an app service at the National Computational Infrastructure. Uh, we can tap into this to um, automatically retrieve the centrally supported um, tools at NCI. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also the versions. And we then also incorporate um, tool lists that we source um, from Pawsey Supercomputing Centre, Galaxy Australia, and QCIF Chris Cloud. So coming back to Toolfinder, Bio.Tools is a key part of the metadata provision in Toolfinder. And we combine this with our local Australian context by providing um, the versions installed across national infrastructure. This is really to firstly provide information about tools that a life science researcher can use today. So if we take the example of something like BCF tools, 
we have direct links out to the original documentation for the tool, links to buy to the buyer.tools documentation, a description, EDEM topics and container availability drawn from bio.tools. Um, we have the ability for a user to launch searches of the Galaxy toolshed to find what's available there. But we then also, like I said previously, include this availability information. And secondly, there's also that information about tools for which you can request uh, an install. Right? So these tools are missing from an infrastructure that I use or would like to use. Uh, and here are the ways in which I can request that they be installed. The future, uh, there are four main aspects that I'd like to talk about. The first one is user experience. We're really interested in improving the tool finder service. Um, we want to make sure that it's fit for purpose for Australian researchers. Um, and that means um, identifying how it fits into research processes and how we could improve it uh, relative to those processes. We wanna continue with our infrastructure integrations and make these more automated and sustainable. We want to move into the reusability space. Um, and so what this means um, is uh, in the case of Galaxy Australia tools, um, we would like to incorporate um, launch buttons. So where you could just click and you are then redirected to that, um, to that tool on the Galaxy Australia platform. And finally, we're extending into um, workflow uh, discoverability with Workflow Finder. Um, and this is going to be a partner service um, to Tool Finder. Um, the HTML for the current version, uh, or the URL, sorry, um, is provided at the bottom of this slide. Um, and what we hope to provision there are canonical workflows that the community can reuse um, for um, particular applications like genome assembly, um, just as an example. Um, I want to thank the organisers for the opportunity to present um, Tool Finder today. Uh, this work really represents the cumulative effort of our communities of practice, science drivers and infrastructure partners. Um, a lot of people um, have contributed to this effort and I want to say a big thank you to everyone um, who was involved. Thank you very much uh, and I'm happy to take any questions.